and how excited. For those of you who have been gripped like I have to ITV2's big reunion, you're going to know who this guy is. It's Lee Brennan from 911. Hello. Hey, evening, Lewis. You all right? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm great, I'm great. I'm just up north in my hometown of Carlisle, visiting the family and stuff, so it's all good. It must be so kind of busy for you at the minute. I mean, you must be hectic, the things going on. You must be doing loads of press and interviews. Yeah, there's so much happening at the minute. It's just, it's quite, it's quite overwhelming, to be honest with you. But, you know, it's, um, it's just amazing to be, get, get the opportunity, I guess, to do what we're doing again and um, just going to seize every minute of it, like, enjoy it all. It's just, it's, it is, it's just amazing. Is it surreal being back, you know, in the public eye as much as you have been? Because this show has literally catapulted you back into everything that you were you were in the nineties. So it must be amazing. Yeah, it's it is surreal. Um, I think like being it's the first time I've been home in Carlisle for since Christmas, obviously, and I can I can feel the change and stuff. And you get a lot more people coming up to me than I did a few months ago. And I mean, the show has gone so well. And it's it's ITV2's biggest show for five years, so it's. It's just, it's, it's surreal, as you said, it really is surreal. I'm lucky, very lucky. And, but, I mean, when you started out in the band 911, you were very young yourself, so did, would you say that being in such a big band and having the paparazzi in your life and stuff like that, did it take away some of the joys of your, you know, teenage life, you know, your younger years? Um, I guess it affects people in different ways, doesn't it? And, um, you know, some of us cope with it, some don't, and I felt a bit uncomfortable, but... I think this industry, you know, that that entertainment industry, it's a love, it's a love hate thing, and I guess it's like a drug as well. You really, you you want to be in it all the time, but then sometimes people don't like the, the other side of it, like you say, the press side of it and stuff. But I think now, obviously, it's it's I'm 39 now, and you know, the lads are 38 and 41. It's just it's just more relaxed, I guess, and we can just enjoy everything, and we're not flying off around the world doing promotion like we used to do. So it's just. Uh, again, it's just amazing to have that opportunity to do what we used to do in a certain kind of way. I mean, it seems like you're all enjoying yourself, being back in you know your little group and doing what you do best, which is entertaining people. But um, your debut single, it, you know, went straight into the top forty with a night to remember. So, so when you found out you were first in the charts, how did you feel? Do you remember how you felt at the time? Do you know what? Um, I saw a picture of actually. Um, we're on our way to a gig. I remember when we got the chart position number thirty-eight for night to remember. And we were listening to the radio and stuff, and I actually seen a picture of us pulled it over in a lay-by, which is what we did. We got out of the car, and then we started jumping around on the side <laughs> of this lay-by when we found out we were number 38 with our first song. And I seen a picture of it, like, um, for the first time in, like, 10, 12 years, and it just brought back those memories. And it was it was, it was, was amazing to hear your song on the radio. Like, that was the first thing, but to actually, like, um, hear it chart number 38 without a major record deal as well was was something huge back in those days so it was, it was just a massive buzz i remember i mean definitely and it didn't stop there it, you know you went from success success to success i mean you had so many chart hits including my favorite um body body shaking but of also <laughs> you had a number one as well so how, do you remember how you celebrated that do you know we were in um dublin at the time actually doing some promotion out there and um we got told we had the number one and it was, i think it was our 11th single so it was like a bit of a, like a Wow, we've done it at last because we, we always wanted to get a number one. You know, from the start, we always said we wanted to play Wembley and get a number one. So when it came round, it was it was like, yeah, it was huge, but it was weird in a way because it was like only a year later that we decided we finished the band. So it was it was quite a weird time. But I remember flying back from Ireland back into London thinking we are the UK's number one selling act and it was, it was a great feeling. But um, like you said, then when the band actually split, what went what went through your mind at the time? Was it a tough time for you, or was it, in your personal opinion, was it the right time for the band to kind of split? I felt it was the right time for me personally. Um, I just thought we, you know, we'd had our four album deal with Virgin, and that was fulfilled, and you know they weren't going to sign us up again. And I felt it was a natural ending. But I think also mentally, for for me personally, it was it had to end because. I, think, I don't know, I was, I was losing the plot well before that time. So I think for me it was, it was like a relief when it all ended and stuff. As I, as I said on the show, the big reunion, um, it, it was a bit of a relief and I just wanted to stop and hide away sort of for a while and find, find out who I was, I guess. So, um, I mean, after you left the band, I mean, you also went into acting as well. You've done some pantomime. So is that something you enjoy? Was that something you always wanted to get into? 
you know, I never thought about acting, but um, I mean, I did a few musical auditions and stuff, but I didn't really have the confidence, to be honest with you. And it's a, it's a completely different thing from being in a pop band to doing that musical theatre style of sort of show and acting and stuff. I'd never been brought up at, you know, learning all that sort of stuff. I had no audition experience at all, so it was really weird to do all that. But then I got offered Panto and I was like, OK, let me see, let me do it, let me try this, see if I can read a script. And I, I played like Peter Pan for five years and it's it, it was just really good times because, um, you know, you meet new people, you, you just learn a different trait to what you're used to learning and, yeah, it was just great. I haven't done it for like five years, but I'd definitely be up for doing it again. It's just fun. That's, that's all it is. And would, fun. would you say your time in pantomime, that kind of got your confidence back because obviously when you left the band you said that you were in a bit of a tricky situation would you say pantomime got you know the spring back in your step no no <laughs> <laughs> no it didn't actually no i think i just like i think i just forced myself through it like um yeah, as i've talked about i think um sometimes when you're doing something you have to just sort of i think i fake my confidence in a way sometimes when i'm when i was in the band and performing and i did that probably at panto that early stage because i think that was like that was back in 2003, maybe my first panto, and now and I wasn't. I, I know in my head now, thinking back to that, I just wasn't. I wasn't mentally right for stuff at all, but I just managed to get through it, I guess. And I mean, when when I'm watching the show and I talk about it with other people, you come across as such a genuine, just a really decent guy and stuff. And you know, Thank you're you. so open, and so it's very good to see where you are now and how the band and how things are going. Because you're going to an arena tour. I mean, that must be amazing for you. <laughs> I know, I mean, yeah, I mean, ITV, you know, once the viewing figures started coming in and it was, it was one of the biggest shows and stuff and they mentioned the arena too, it was like, wow. I mean, I sat in um, the O2 in London about three years ago, four years ago, watching Boys yeah. on, and I remember sort of saying to the people I was with, one day we'll play here. I don't know how we're going to get there. I don't know, I don't know when it's going to be, but... I just had this feeling that one day somehow we'd we'd play it and we're, we're going to get the chance to do a, you know, that plus all the other arenas around the country, which is uh, pretty mind blowing at, at my age, to be honest with you. It really is. But, um, now going back to what you said about, you know, back on the show, we all as a group we sat down and said, let's just be honest, be ourselves, and hopefully that's come across in our different personalities. But you know what you see on TV, that that's how I am. I am open and. I don't know, people might have shown too much emotion in that, but that's just, that's just the way I am, so that's it, really. I, th I think it's, that's a good thing as well, because us as viewers, we can understand and kind of relate to... Because when, obviously when you see a band, you just think everything's hunky-dory, but you don't realise what you know the people in the band can be going through themselves in a personal issue, so it's kind of eye-opening for a lot of people to see what you guys went through. Well, that's what a lot of... You know, when you speak to a lot of um, of our followers and stuff now, they... They say, obviously, they were so young and obviously they're going to be naive to it so they don't realise what, what was um, going on behind all the sort of glamour side of it and that. And and it does affect you. I mean, I think it doesn't matter what sort of what sort of band you've been in and stuff, this industry just sort of eats you up. And I think sometimes the record levels, they put too much pressure on you to work, you know, 16, yeah. 17, 18 hours a day. And I don't think they care too much really about... Yeah. Um, the mental side, it's, it's the money side they care about. and So it's worrying when you see, you know, like the One Direction and stuff, you just hope that they're getting some, some good support because it doesn't, you know, if you've got 10 million in the bank or not, it's all about what's in your head, what's going on up there. So you've got to be careful how you sort of, um, how you react to everything, I guess. But how are the rehearsals going at the minute? Is, I mean, is that going well? Because obviously an arena tour, you're going to be doing a lot of rehearsals, making sure everything's kind of 100%. So how is that, how is that going? It's going great, actually. Um, we've got a few weeks off now, to be honest. We're just doing like little bits of press and stuff, and the odd TV and obviously radio interviews and that. But yeah, we've we sort of we're just trying to work out exactly what I think we're going to add, like maybe another song or two to the actual arena tour, hopefully, and just trying to decide which songs to do. But everything's looking in good shape anyway. I think it's going to be an amazing show as well. All, you know, all the acts and stuff being supporting each other and. I don't know, I can't, I can't wait, it's just going to be a buzz. I think it's going to be quite a messy tour. I think we'll be all in the bar till God knows what time, so <laughs> it's going to be mental. Well, I'm going to make sure I'm definitely there, because I want to see, I mean, to see 5911, Atomic Kitten, Bewitched, Honeys and Liberty X all in one show. And Blue now, I've I've heard that, are kind of go at joining this last minute. They're joining the TV show. I don't think Blue are confirmed for the tour or anything, but they're on the TV show, yeah, very soon. Um, that was just announced last night, wasn't it, so... 
We'll have to see that. Well, it's been an amazing talking to you. Do you have any upcoming projects yourself, apart from the band, coming up? Um, I've got a few sort of things in the pipeline, but the main, I'm going to be I'm going to be like bringing out um, a 40 in September, so I'm hopefully bringing out an autobiography in, in on my 40th birthday, hopefully. So that's what I'm working on at the minute. So fingers crossed. And how are you finding that? You know, writing about the you know the things you've been through and some of the highs and lows. Does it, does it when you're writing? Stuff, like stuff about that. Does it bring it back to you? Yeah, definitely. It's just like a memory stick, isn't it? You get, you yeah. think of that memory and you get the feeling about it, whether it's a happy one or a sad one or whatever. You know, really buzz sort of time and stuff. But it, it's it's been amazing so far. And um, yeah, just, there's there's obviously things I haven't talked about in the show, which will be in the book. And <clears throat> excuse me, which will be in the book. So yeah, it's just it's it's just really good getting your feelings out on paper and stuff and. Some of the things that you remember from when you were kids, like, wow, I totally forgot about that. But, you know, speaking to family members and stuff, it brings it all back. Well, I definitely look forward to that, and I'll make sure I get a copy. And I'm really excited about the tour. Um, congratulations, and I hope everything goes really well. Can, um, what can we expect from the tour? Can, can we expect the, you know, the legendary moves? Will they be making a return? All the flips, all the old 90s moves, maybe a few modern moves in there as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, us as a band, 911, we're like a whole performance package I guess we didn't just stand there and, and try and sing the songs beautifully and perfect in harmony we just like we just wanted to put on a show visually vocal as, as, as good as we could just to make an all-round sort of performance package and that's what exactly we'll be doing on the tour so bring it on we're all in the best shape of our lives as well so you know we can't wait seriously it's absolutely fantastic and thank you for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you genuinely nice guy and I can't wait to see the rest of the big reunion Thanks, Lewis. Thank Please you very man. much. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.